Hello and welcome to today's math tip of the week. Uh, today's math tip is going to be regarding how to convert between degrees and radians. And so this, this is a topic that's very useful in algebra, uh, geometry, trigonometry, and definitely in calculus. Anytime that you're dealing with radians and also degrees. So in everyday life we've used degrees all the time. We kind of understand what, what 90 degrees is. That's when you know you have up and down perpendicular to something else. And we understand what 360 degrees is. That's in our everyday language. But when you start dealing with radians a lot of times you get a little bit confused. So we can use calculators to do this sort of conversion but understanding how to do it by hand is super super helpful. Uh, the way to do that is and this is the way we could do all unit conversions really, is we'll set up a little unit conversion cancellation table like this. We'll go ahead and set it like this. If we're going to do 90 degrees and convert that to radians, then we'll go ahead and put 90 and we'll put DEG for degrees. Now here's the trick. You have to come up with a conversion factor. In order to convert to radians, you have to know a little bit about radians. So when you start studying this in trigonometry or geometry, you learn pretty quickly uh, something called the unit circle. So I'll kind of sketch a unit circle over here in the corner. It's nothing special. It's really, it's really just a little coordinate axis with a, a circle uh, right on top like that. And what we use it for is basically over here in the x-axis, this little horizontal axis, we call that zero degrees. When we get up here perpendicular, we call this 90 degrees. When we get over here, we call it 180 degrees. Here we call it 270. And when we get all the way back around the circle, we call it 360 degrees. So it's the same thing you already know. It's not magical. There's 360 degrees in one circle. That's sort of the, big, the, the main point. But when you start learning about radians, you understand that there's a different way to measure angles. And instead of talking about 360 degrees, you'll learn pretty quickly when you learn about radians that there are two pi radians in one full circle. There's two pi radians in one full revolution. Don't worry too much about the history of why that's the case right now, but it's just sort of a fact you need to understand and remember that there's 360 degrees in a circle, and at the same time, if you go switch over to talking about radians, there's two pi radians. Pi is just a number, 3.14 and a bunch of decimals after. So you can use this fact to do the conversion. In fact, that is your conversion factor. It's the easiest one to remember, that they're 360 degrees, which is equal to two radians, two pi radians. And so the way you set up this cancellation table is since we know that 360 degrees uh, is involved, we'll put 360 DEG like this, and we know it's equal to two pi radians. So we'll put two pi, and we're gonna put RAD to signify radians right here. The reason we write it like this, with the degrees on the bottom and the radians on the top, is because, let me switch colors here, when we have something on the bottom and a unit on the bottom and a unit on the top, we can cancel the degrees with the degrees. This is the way we set up all unit conversions. This is the way I teach unit conversions in all of my physics and chemistry and unit conversion tutorials. And it works just as well for angles as it does for everything else. You could have put 360 degrees on the top and two pi radians on the bottom, but if you did that, none of the units would cancel because they can only cancel if you have the same unit in the top and the bottom. So once you have it written like this, it becomes very easy. All you do is you take 90, you multiply by two pi, which is just two times pi, and then you divide by 360, and the only unit left over, the only unit that has not been canceled is radian, so that's what you've converted to. So the way you would do that is, let me go ahead and get rid of this real quick, or at least part of it. Uh, the way you would do this is, you would say, okay, 90 times 2 is what? 9, 9 times 2 is 18, so you have 180, 180, don't forget pi, so you have 180 pi on the top. On the bottom, you still have 360. So when you look at this fraction, 180 pi over 360, how do you think you simplify that? Well, you can divide top and bottom both by 180. So on the top, you're just going to have 1, which just reduces to pi. On the bottom, you'll divide by 180, and you'll get 2. So make sure you understand what I'm doing here. All we've done is we've taken 90 times 2 times pi. That gives us 180 pi. We left the 360 alone. You take 180, and you simplify this fraction, basically, by dividing top and bottom by 180. You get a 1 on the top. You get a 2 on the bottom. So here you have pi over 2. The only unit left over is radians. So this is what we have, pi over 2 radians. You have converted 90 degrees to pi over 2 radians. Now let's see if that makes sense. Let's go back to our unit circle. 
if this is a unit circle here, then if you look at 90 degrees, it's up here, right here. And if you look back to learning about your unit circle and trigonometry, you'll realize that up here on the vertical axis is also pi over 2 radians. Because I told you, it's 2 pi radians all the way around. Let me erase this really quickly and show you a little bit larger unit circle so that you can sort of visualize a little bit better. Here is our unit circle. All right, we start at zero degrees, which is the same thing as zero radians, right? So let's talk about zero right here. We go up here, we get pi over two radians. When we get over here, we have, we count in terms of pi over two. So this is going to be two pi over two, but this fraction reduces to pi. So this is pi radians. We continue counting down here. We have three pi over two radians. And then here we continue counting and we have 4 pi over 2 radians, which reduces to 2 pi as a fraction. So the way you remember the unit circle, at least the quadrants of the unit circle, the big fish here, you have 0 radians, pi over 2 radians, 2 pi over 2 radians, 3 pi over 2 radians, 4 pi over 2 radians. Basically you're counting in terms of pi over 2 chunks because one quarter of this circle is pi over 2 radians. So let me do that one more time. Pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2. It's just that these fractions here, the 2 pi over 2 and the 4 pi over 2, they reduce to pi over here and 2 pi over here. So again, we come back literally full circle. One way all the way around is 2 pi radians. Notice that a half circle is pi radians, right, which is something you learn in trig also. So that's a little bit of a review of what you kind of learn in trigonometry. I just wanted to kind of go over it and give you a little bit of a... Uh, a primer in it. What if we wanted to convert 90 degrees again one more time, same exact calculation, but we wanted to use a different conversion factor. Instead of remembering that 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians, if we wanted to, we could do the exact same conversion by remembering that 180 degrees, whoops, DEG is what I'm looking for here, so we'll put DEG, 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. So this is slightly different than before. Before we put 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. This is exactly equivalent. 180 degrees is also equal to, not 2 pi, but 1 pi radians. And what you're going to find, basically, the punchline here, is you get exactly the same answer. Degrees cancels with degrees, so those, those things disappear. And what you get is 90 times pi. So you get 90 pi on the top. On the bottom, you have 180. And then you just need to simplify this fraction. How do you think you do it? Divide top and bottom by 90. 90 divided by 90 is 1, so you're going to be left with pi on the top. 180 divided by 90 is 2. So again, you get pi over 2 uh, radians. And it basically proves what we, what we already know, that 90 degrees is equal to pi over 2 radians. So it's whatever conversion factor you would prefer to remember. I like to remember that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. If that's a hard thing for you to remember, just remember that it's exactly equivalent. 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. But the point is, just remember one or the other because it, either one of them is perfectly valid and perfectly capable of doing what you want to do. All right, now let's do a couple quick other ones. Let's go and look at 180 degrees. 180 degrees. All right, so at this part, it becomes quite mechanical. To convert Degrees to radians, we just apply the conversion factor. You can use either one you want. I'm going to use 180 degrees, DEG. This is supposed to be an 8 here. Let me go ahead and erase that. It's going to be 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. And this is just a conversion factor that you're going to use over and over and over again. So you just end up remembering it. Degrees is going to cancel with degrees because they're on top and bottom. And now I just simply do multiplication. 180 times pi, 180 times pi. On the bottom, I have 180. 180 divided by 180, they go away, so I'm just left with pi. So what have I learned? 180 degrees is equal to pi radians, which is exactly what you already know from your unit circle. That if you go 180 degrees over here, it's going to be the same thing as pi radians. So I'm doing these kind of simple problems for you because I'm trying to reinforce what you already know from your unit circle studies. Now let's do something a little bit uh, different, not really any harder, but what about 45 degrees? What about 45 degrees? All right, well we apply exactly the same conversion factor. Let's do 180 degrees is pi radians. 
we apply it this way, we could flip the top and bottom here, but if we put degrees on the top and radians on the bottom, nothing would cancel, so it would lead to nowhere. So you would cancel degrees with degrees, and you just do the multiplication. 45 times pi is 45 pi, and 180 is on the bottom. And so if you do this in a calculator, you'll get a decimal, that's right. But if you think about this, 45 divided by 45 will be 1, so we'll have a pi on the top. 180 divided by 45, when you think about it for a second, is going to be 4. So what you're going to get is pi over 4 radians. Right? Now if you go back to your trig or your geometry and look at your unit circle here, 45 degrees lies right here, directly between 0 and 90 degrees. And if you look at your unit circle that you've probably studied before, you'll see that this is pi over 4. This angle is pi over 4 radians. We'll do one final quick example to help you drill it in. What about 10 degrees? Something a little bit unconventional. Something that you don't see on a unit circle every day. You apply exactly the same thing. We could use 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi, but I prefer to remember 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. All right? We arrange it like this because degrees cancels with degrees and what you have on the top is 10 times pi, we just leave it as 10 pi. On the bottom we write we leave the 180 that we have. And you look at this, you have a 10 on the top and a 180 on the bottom. You divide both top and bottom by 10. 10 divided by 10 is 1, so you'll be left with pi on the top. 180 divided by 10 is going to give you 18 on the bottom, so you have a nice number of pi over 18 radians. And the reason it's radians, the reason this works, is because that's the only unit that you have left on the top uh, that hasn't been canceled out. So that's the unit that applies. And by the way, what I'm showing you here with this cancellation uh, technique of unit conversion, this is how you convert everything. I mean, really, this is how you would convert uh, meters to centimeters or meters to kilometers or anything. I mean, it really works with any sort of unit conversion. Let me take a moment to show you what I'm talking about right here. Let's say that you wanted to convert something, let's do something we know, let's convert uh, kilometers to meters. Let's say we have five kilometers and we want to convert it to meters, right? So we have to come up with a conversion factor. Now we know that 1,000 meters is equal to one kilometer, but a lot of students get confused on if they should divide or multiply by the conversion factor. And a lot of books have a lot of kooky ways to teach it. All you have to do is arrange your units. One kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. We arrange it this way rather than flipped upside down with kilometers on the top because arranging it this way cancels kilometers with kilometers. And you're left with meters. So there's not much thinking involved. You see, you can just kind of you can just kind of use the cancellation technique to do the logic for you. Now five times one thousand gives you five thousand. The unit is meters. So what you have proven is that five kilometers is five thousand meters, which is a simple conversion. It's something you understand, but I'm just illustrating the technique. Now I want to do one unit conversion going the other way. Going from, instead of degrees to radians, let's go from radians uh, to, to degrees. So let's say we have 3 pi over 2 radians. We want to convert that to degrees. So we'll start with what we know, radians, but we're going to use exactly the same conversion factor. Namely that 180 degrees, so I put 180 degrees, is equal to pi radians. Now the reason we write it this way, see this time the degrees are on top and the radians on the bottom, the reason we do that is because we want to cancel radians, so they have to be on top and bottom. Right, that's the reason we didn't flip it around the other way. So here we just do the multiplication, 3 pi over 2 times 180 divided by pi. So what we're basically going to have when we write it out is 3 times 180 times pi, this is all on the top, divided by 2. And what we're going to have on the bottom is divided by pi. All of this stuff is what I've got on the top, and the pi just remains from the bottom. Now pi is going to cancel with pi because they're going to divide out. And what we're going to have is 180 divided by 2 is 90. So we'll have 3 times 90 really is how this whole thing is going to reduce. The pi's go away. 180 divided by 2 gives me 90, and I'm still multiplying by 3. 9 times 3 is 27, so this is 270. The unit that I end up with is the one that has not been canceled, which is degrees. 
So the answer is 270 degrees. And if you go back to your unit circle, you'll realize that 3 pi over 2 is indeed 270 degrees. So I just wanted to share with you how to convert back and forth from degrees and radians by hand because it is very useful in all math classes and all science classes as well. And also the general technique of, of canceling units is probably one of the most useful things that I've ever learned in math. So definitely take a minute to understand it and apply it in all of your classes.